Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This lesson we're going to talk about inheritance. Since we kind of started into it a little bit last lesson, we'll go ahead and kind of go all in on this lesson. So let's go ahead and copy this code that we had from lesson four. We'll come over here to this lesson. And so this, extending a class is actually pretty simple. And what it allows you to do is inherit all of the functionality that is not private from the original class. So when we talk about these and we have new class extending my class, new class is what we would call the child class and my class is what we would call the parent class. Since new class extends my class, my class is the parent and new class is the child. It's inheriting, new class is inheriting from my class. Okay. So again, what this allows us to do is anything that's protected or public, then we are able to use within this new class. Now, the way we can see that is if we go to and we change this to new class. Now, keep in mind, we don't have any functionality inside a new class right here. All we're doing is extending my class, but we're still calling this my function method here. So let's go ahead and load this and you see we get this high right here. So even though we haven't added anything inside of new class, we've inherited all of the functionality from our original parent class. Now, just to show you, if we change this to protected and we reload this, then you can see that we get this call to this protected method. Okay, so we are calling this outside of the class here and this function is protected. So that's why we don't have access to this. And then if we do, you know, private like this, of course, we're going to get that as well. Now, something that we could do is if we change this back to protected, and let's say we add a new method inside of here. So we'll do public function and we'll do uh, display. And inside display, all we do is we call this and we call my function and then out here go ahead and put our semicolon out here a new class we call display of the new method that we created in our new class so let's go ahead and run that you see we get high again now the reason that we get high <laughs> is because we are from we are calling my function now from within a class that extends it so even though it's protected we still are calling it from within a a a class that extends it so this is allowed and now we're calling the public function display that's what we're calling out here so what we would have to do is if we set this to private If we set that to private, uh, now we're going to get the fatal error call to private method. Okay, so we're not able to do that. So that's how an inheritance works and in all this. Now, again, you know, the way that you want to, to use this, examples of how you might use this. I mean, let's say, so one example I can think of is, let's say you get uh, an SDK from some site like maybe YouTube for interacting with its API and you want to build a wrapper around that well one of the ways that you could do that would be to simply extend whatever class or classes that are there's usually in these SDKs there's going to be like a standard sort of base class that you use so you could extend that class um, in order to use its functionality bring all of its available functionality to your new class that you're going to write that is a wrapper that because you're going to use YouTube in some specific way. So you could take something that's out there that somebody has written or that is existing, or maybe you've written, and you could uh, extend it and then add in your own very specific functionality. Or you could have, say, a database class. And let's say we talk about a query class and a database class. Maybe the way you want to use your database class is to just simply extend it with your query class. Now you want to be a little bit careful of that because of the way multiple inheritance works and it can get a little tricky when you, if, you know, if you want to use your database class and 
uh, in query and in maybe another class and another class and another class, then that can all get a little bit tricky. But uh, you know, if if that's the if query is the only class that's going to be interacting directly with the database class, then maybe that that would be an option for you. You could do that. Um, that's not the only way to interact with the database class, but again, it's an option. Uh, or maybe you create an object class that is sort of like a, a base framework, and then from that you create a very specific post class that adds to what you have in object so that you can uh, have stuff very specific for posts. So again, the, I'm just throwing out some examples of, of different ways that you might be able to use this, but again, the big thing is this new class is going to take all of the uh, properties and all of the methods from its parent class uh, as long as those are either public or protected. Now, there's a couple things to to keep in mind here. First off, when it comes to uh, constructors, the child class will not automatically call the constructor of the parent class. So you have to use some sort of specific syntax. So we go public, and we're going to go function and we're going to create our own constructor inside of our uh, inside of our child class. Now if we leave this like this you can see we go back to getting I like oop. Now why? Why did we go back to that? Because we overrode before we didn't have a constructor in our child class so it just used the parent class. Now we've actually created a constructor inside our child class. It overwrites the parent one. So this parent one isn't going to get run. That's why we go back to I like oop because we need that parent constructor to overwrite what was in our variable here. So that's why that happens. Now maybe it might be the case where you want this constructor to run still. So what you do is you use uh, parent colon colon and then construct so you're essentially calling that parent method so now this is going to cause that parent constructor to run so if we rerun this uh, oh actually we need to pass in our variables so let's go text and we need text Oop. All right, so we have variables, so we need to make sure we put those in there. So now if we rerun that, we go back to getting high. So that's something to keep in mind when you're you're working with this. This also opens up something uh that we may not that that may not be immediately obvious, but it shows you how you can do this. Because we have this constructor class here and we have a constructor method here, you might think, well, we have two of the same name. This is how you override methods from the parent class in your child class. So, for example, we could create a method called public and we could do my function. Again, this is the same name as what we have up here. Now, instead of just doing... Uh, let me go ahead and add my function keyword. I'm pretty horrible about that, actually. You might notice that. I do that even when I just code on my own. Um, so my function, now what we can do is maybe we want to change this. Maybe we want to take echo this uh, var. Oop. And then we're going to add something to it that's like um, hi. Let's just add a period since we did it in the original one. My name is John. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh that. You can see now we get, hi, my name is John. So we have two methods with the same name, but there's no error because what PHP does is when you extend like this, this class will overwrite the, the class in the parent. Okay, so that's how you can extend a class and have access to the data that's available in the parent or the, the functionality that's available in the parent class. And then if there are certain methods inside of that class that you want to overwrite, you can do that as well. And obviously, if you want to in here, you can overwrite properties 
I mean, as well, you can, you know, uh, this var equals, okay, so let's see what that gives us. So now we have something different. My name is John. Why do we have that? Because remember, we passed in high is all we passed in. So that <laughs> that goes to this class, high, but then we run that through our parent. Our parent comes up here and says, okay, the, this var is now equal to test. Then we, right after that, change this var to something different. So this basically gets an, uh, uh, overwritten by this right here. And now it's this that we're going to use down here when we do this dot var, var period, my name is John. Okay, so I know that can be a little bit confusing, but what I'm trying to show you is that you can override virtually everything inside of the parent class, the methods, the properties, all that sort of thing. So you can grab the functionality you want, and then if you want, there's you want to add to what's there, you can add to it by creating new. You can create new methods inside of here, like we did with display. You can also override existing methods and existing properties inside of it. Now, the one final caveat to that is let's say I put this keyword final on here, on my function. Let's go ahead and reload that. You see we say cannot override method my class my function. So when you're creating your parent class, if you want to create a method that cannot be overwritten by child classes, you need to use this final keyword right here. And that will prevent someone from being able to do this. Okay, so that's a really deep dive in on in in into inheritance. Hopefully, that's pretty clear for you. If not, I would say just kind of go back through it, and then actually get in there and start messing and ch just changing the keywords from private to protected to a, and extending a new class over it. Just get in there and mess with it. Uh, uh, I heard this great quote the other day that clarity comes from action, not from thought. So that I think that's very very true. And that's going to be very, very true in this case. The more you mess with it, the more you use it, the more it's going to kind of make sense and 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 become clear for you. So again, get in there and, and start messing with this stuff. All right, that'll do it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.